live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live US 2019. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. We are day one of our coverage of Cisco Live from San Diego. We're going to be here for three days of coverage. Been a great day so far, and we're pleased to welcome back one of our CUBE alumni, Kent Christensen, the practice director from Insight with the Cloud and Data Center Transformation Group. Kent, welcome back. Thank you. It's been a little while. It has been a little while. So give our audience a little overview of Insight, your partnership with Cisco, and some of the history of how you got to Insight. Um, yeah, so, you remember us as Datalink. We were um, a smaller company than we are now, um, focused on cloud and data center transformation. We've talked at Dell events, EMC events, things like that. We, but we were a Cisco partner for about 10 years. Um, and recently we were acquired, and, and we did what the name sounds like, cloud and data center transformation. We've talked about cloud and the channel and all these other things. Um, Insight acquired us. Insight has kind of four major uh, service um, solution sets, if you would. Some people look at them as a supply chain company, and it's a great large supply chain company, Microsoft's largest global partner. Uh, some people understand it for the device, end user devices, that's called connected workforce. Each of these are pretty big businesses, you know, compared to where we are. Uh, what was Datalink is now what's called cloud and data center transformation. Um, so we're helping people with the journey to the cloud and the hybrid cloud and all that other stuff. And Cisco's right dead center in the middle of that. And then the fourth one is really exciting. It's called Digital Innovation. And that's a couple of companies, uh, Blue Metal, Cardinal, et cetera. Again, 1,000 people, Microsoft IoT and uh, AI Partner of the Year. So all of that is a pretty large uh, channel organization, if you well, would. That, that's great stuff, Ken. And we always, we love to talk to the channel, uh, as the folks on Wall Street do. It's like, you know, we do a channel check. Is, yeah. okay, you know, Cisco's got a few areas that have, you know, stronger growth than the market overall. Security's doing well, a few other spaces uh, that are, you know, growing faster overall than the market and helping Absolutely. grow where, where Cisco's going. So, give us the reality. What's happening with your customers? What's driving, you know, the, the most growth in your business? And, you know, where is, where, where is Cisco kind of leading the pack? So, we're doing really well with Cisco. And I don't know if it's because we're helping clients build solutions that truly lead to business outcomes. We're not order takers, and so we're actually moving up. We're now Cisco's fourth largest partner. Um, we're growing well high single digits growth, which is pretty phenomenal on such a big number. We're talking a billion dollars now and growing that level. Um, and there's a number of reasons. You know, Some of it is there's a lot of great technology. We can get into some of those. Um, we see the economy as being pretty good. Um, not bad yet. You know, Everybody's wor worried about what, what might happen. Um, you mentioned security, we can get into a little bit of that. That's driving a lot of network refresh and stuff like that. Um, and then a little bit of a intra-company, you know, that we're getting our stuff together. So this large company with 15,000 customers, you know, acquires a company with 2,000 customers and now we're getting introduced into the 15,000 with less friction. So that's helping us and that's helping our Cisco business. So here we are at Cisco Live, 30th, time that they've done a customer partner event. The network has not only changed dramatically since their first event in 89, which was called Networkers, I believe, yeah. but networking technology has also massively changed. You mentioned security. And now, in this multi-cloud world, no longer can you just put a firewall around a yeah. data center, right? Obviously, that doesn't work. We have this core, cloud, edge, very amorphous environments, proliferation of mobile, of mobile data traversing the networks. Talk to us about when you're talking with customers who need to transform their data centers, where do you start from a networking conversation perspective? Where automation comes in, where security comes in? You know, a lot of the cloud and data center transformation tends to be the edge of the network. You know, converged infrastructure, stuff like that, that's on the edge. Um, the network security guys, which I'm not, you know, I work with them very closely, but they, we almost separate ourselves out from the data center network and security. But security's end to end, to your point, right? I've got software defined access, I've got mobile access points, I've got, you know, Tetration, I've got, you know, all of these products that are helping people that in the past they were just patching holes in the dike. You know, hey, this happened, let's put this software product in. This happened, let's put this in. And we actually built a security practice like the last three or four years ago. 
it's growing. You know, the number of people that are, whether it's regulation, compliance, you know, I got some, a real problem, I think I've got a problem and I don't know what it is, our ability to come back and sit down and say, let's evaluate what your situation is. So I was talking to the networking guys and said, wow, enterprise networking is up, way up. What's driving that? The need to transform or is that, you know, what is it? And they're like, a lot of times it's something along security that's making them step back and reevaluate and then sometimes that tra trans translates into an entire network refresh. All right. So, so Kent, you mentioned Cisco Tetration, that's one I've heard a number of times having some growth. What, what else, what are some of the you know, hot products out there in, in your customer ICE, base? Uh, Software Defined, SD-WAN, SD-Access. Yeah, so, so one of the things I just want to understand, Cisco actually has a few solutions in some of those areas. Any specific products that you call out or, uh, um, you know, that, In the that enterprise networking, I wouldn't go through each and every individual one. I think this is my view as the layman, right? Because I'm the data center guy and here's the security guy and here's yeah. the networking guy. I think when Cisco started acquiring all these security companies three years ago and you watched it and it looked like a patchwork quilt and said this doesn't fit together, now it fits together. That story is really solid. And so we've got clients that have the, had the luxury of either saying I'm going to do a refresh because I don't want to keep plugging holes and maybe my technology was ready for it anyway. And there's a lot of reasons to refresh, right? My technologies do. Um, digital transformation, I need to get my network ready for IOT, and et cetera, but I keep hearing security over and over, yeah. right? I've got compliance and regulation and all of this other stuff. Yeah, but in your core space, the data center world, uh, you know, any products that are kind of leading the, leading the charge right now? You know, one of the things that's happening in data center from a Cisco perspective, because they're babies, right? 10 years old in data center. They didn't really have data center before that. And we were there at the beginning, and that's really how CDCT built our data center practice. So, you know, when you talk multi-cloud, at the end of the day, even if I'm cloud first, I'm going to end up with some of these mission critical workloads. They might be boring, they're running the company, right? They're not the innovative DevOps, IoT, AI thing that seems cool. They're running the company, and that's still a, a, a converged or a hyper-converged play. And some of those, you know, there's a lot of opportunities we've been talking about all day with the Cisco BUs. You know, some of those are ready for refresh, right? So there's a great opportunity to just go in and say, okay, what's next? You know, we've added, um, you know, the latest server technology, we've added all these things in the server technology, obviously all flash and the storage technologies and all of that. Um, so that's huge. And then, you know, Cisco continues to innovate in data center solutions. Um, with things like Hyperflex, which we you know, talked a little bit about. And it started off a little slow because, again, just like they were in servers, why are they here? Why are they in hyper-converged? Well, I get it. And now that product is slowly improved and improved and improved, and we're seeing tremendous growth there. And I think the luxury they have on a data center solution is that some of the other guys have to do a or. Hey, I'm the leading hyper-converged technology, but it's me or everybody else. Right, um, and then Cisco's an ant, right? That I can connect those things together. So let's talk about some customer examples. You can feel free to anonymize these. I'm seeing a smile on your face. When you come into an organization, whether it's a 100-year-old bank or it's a born of the cloud or a, maybe a smaller, more nimble organization that needs to undergo transformation, data center transformation, what is the conversation like with respect to helping them take all of these disparate, presumably, disparate solutions, whether they're 10, 15 different security solutions, how does Insight come in and help them, I don't want to say integrate, but almost plug these things in together to extract value and yep. help them make sure that what they're implementing from a technology perspective is necessary and also an accelerator of their business? Yeah, there's a lot there. Um, so we have this, you know, so, a year ago, everybody wanted to talk about cloud, and then you had the security guys, but now you have a lot of change agents with transformation in their title, right? And so, we have this belief. You're not going to digitally transform. Now, there are people that are born digital, but companies that were buying Cisco 10 years ago need to go through a digital transformation, and you can't go through a digital transformation until you have a data center transformation or an IT transformation. So we've done studies. What slows people down? What makes these fail? Legacy stuff. 
security concerns. I mean, these are the top three things, right? Budget, I was just running the company. And so we start there, that says, where do you want to get to? And then most of it is, let's understand what you have, what your objectives are as an organization. I want to get to this, I want to get to that. Well before we start talking about technologies. And it's very, it's very um, services oriented, right? I, I can't just go in there and throw you a bomb and say this is going to fix your problem, because everybody's different. So it, it, it is very custom and very services oriented. But you're yeah, saying I, I was just going to say, it's a pattern I've seen quite a bit for the last couple of years, is step one is modernize the platform, and then step two, you can worry about your data and application story on top of that in that multi-cloud world that and you live in. And step one, admit you have a problem. Yeah. So we actually <laughs> did a study, yeah. you know, we do this, and we're like, well, why does everybody keep stalling? Why have we been stuck in this? Nobody's uh, refreshing things and stuff like that. Well, there's a lot of new technology, they don't get it. Um, but you know, do you want to digitally transform, understand what you need to do? But we ask questions like, rate your IT infrastructure. Just rate it, B minus, across a lot of large companies. That was what the grade they gave themselves. So there's a lot of opportunity to say, okay, where do you want to be? Yeah, and where do we start? Yeah, 90% of people think they are above average drivers. So uh, <laughs> Drivers, but they think they have a B minus right. in IT infrastructure. Yeah. And it's like, do you consider that a problem? Yeah. So once you, as we wrap here in the next minute or so, once you get them to admit, yeah, there's, a, there's problems here that Insight and other partners come, in, come in, in and improve, data center transformation, modernizing that infrastructure, but it's got to be concurrent with starting to modernize and transform other areas, right? Absolutely, so, um, you know, there's so many places you could start. Sometimes you just go and say, well, what's your appetite? Every once in a while you get somebody who's ready to go through an entire transformational process, you know, $20 million or more or whatever, and we get those opportunities. Those are awesome. Now we get to start back and figure out where you want to be and how to get there most efficiently. A lot of people have to pick and choose. You know, what's your concern right now? Um, and so we'll help them figure that out. And again, it could be security, it could be, you know, how many people, we have over a thousand enterprise customers running SQL 2008. That's a problem, right? Because that's end of support within a year, right? That's a problem, that's uh, you know opportunity. So they are still trying to figure out these things. And then a, uh, a picture on where I want to get to, which we've kind of always said, and that's where that digital innovation group, they've got all these AI projects. And as we sit here and talk about those things are kind of born in the cloud, but they're coming toward the infrastructure. It was easy to get a GPU in the cloud, but I'm going to have to start. And so we actually have all the latest Cisco technology and storage technology of AI stuff in our labs and stuff like that. So there's a lot going on. It's, it's, uh, our CEO said, would say, it's a really exciting time to be in this business. It sounds like it. I wish we had more time to start digging through that, but you'll have to come back, Ken. Okay. All right, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from day one of our coverage of Cisco Live from San Diego. Thanks for watching.